Indian Dohoti. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be with you this morning. And my name is Tse Itso, which means beaver woman. My English or French name, it sounds more French than English, Louise Prophet LeBlanc. I'm from the Nachanayak Dan First Nation, from the Yukon Territory. Um, Nacho is the name for the Stewart River. Been a storyteller for many years. As well as being a storyteller, I'm a story keeper. Many of these stories are classical stories, they're stories of creation, they're stories of why the land was formed as it was, why a river now flows south or north, um, certain landscapes, all of these wonderful places in the Yukon um, all have indigenous names. There's 13 communities there, there's nine languages, and many of the stories of these different land features, of course they have an indigenous name, and those names are the title of stories, if you will, like Atsan Man. This is a place that's called Atsan Man, which means reed lakes. And there's a powerful story that took place there. Any place that you travel in the north, in the south, wherever you travel in the world, uh, there are places of story. Even a little plant that started out from a little seed, that plant has its story. And um, maybe the story is ultimately shown with a flower that blooms from it. <clears throat> so there was a time in my younger years, uh, before land claims were settled in the Yukon, I worked for several years for the Nacho Nayakdan First Nation to establish um, to establish our claim to land that we had used for thousands of years. And my job was a great job because I went around to elders, to their homes, and I asked them about land use. Where did they use land for hunting, for fishing, for trapping, for berry picking, for roots, for a winter camp, where, which land did they use? Where did they bury their dead along the trail? These are very important to many of the elders. They wanted to make sure that whoever came in to build a road, a house, or put in a mine or whatever, that they would not disturb our ancestors' graves. So these things are really important. So this one day I went to visit Lucy and Sam Peter, Lucy Cho and Gilingshan. Lucy Cho means big Lucy. And uh, wasn't that she was huge? It means that you have reached a status in your life, that you're an elder. So you have Cho at the end of your name. So Lucy Cho, and Sam had traveled extensively in the Nachonayaktan region where the people lived for thousands of years. And we spread out the map and we were looking at the map, of course, that all had English names. So they were giving me the indigenous names for all of these places. And there's one little, small, little lake, which is probably about well, I, sh I shouldn't guess how long. It was uh, outside of the place where we were now living, which was Mayo in the Yukon, along the Nacho, which is the Stewart River. Um, so there's this little lake, and I had no idea about this lake. He said, this is a reed lake? I said, yes. So he's using a big magnifying glass so he can really see the, the map. And... Um, he said, this one, he call it Atsan Man. And it was so many years ago that I was told the name of this lake. I had kind of forgotten how to really pronounce it. So 
Atsan man means old woman's lake. Belongs to this old woman. And I was mispronouncing it for a number of years till a sweet elder came to me and said, Why do you put the woman in the lake? I said, What? He said, You say, Atsua man. That means the old lady is in the lake. <laughs> so, you know, I was so happy to be corrected. It's Atsan man, old woman's lake. He said, this is a very sacred place, this lake. It grows long reeds like that out of the lake. It's like a swamp, but it's got lots of jackfish in there, and it's a good place. Moose go close by. Yeah, he said, I remember that time my daddy he got sick. He, we have to take him there a long ways. We make we make like a little stretcher, you know, with poles, and we put skin inside, we carry him there. Because the old woman, she's a healer. She doesn't go away from her camp. She got a little sweat house there. She don't want to be around people because then her power is cut off. So she received people, and then you have to go. We took my dad there. I don't know. We were there for over maybe 10, day, 10 days, maybe. He started to feel better from her medicine, how she take care of him. Well, not too long after that, we heard, we got news in the community that that old woman, she had a little baby. My dad was surprised. He said, well, he said, not our business, what she do. That's her business. Maybe she want baby, that's good. Keep her young, he said. <laughs> yeah. So Sam said, you know, here's that old woman. She want to walk around, I guess she got cane. She go down by her little lake there. There's a reed lake, so at sun man. I guess maybe at that time they never named it after her yet, but she's going down by her little lake. She's looking for sweat rocks for her little sweat house. It's certain kind of rocks you use. You heat them up and they don't explode when they're heated up. So she's looking for them special rocks to put in her little lodge before she helps to heal people. She goes in there, she says prayers in there, and she prepare herself for healing. So she's walking along that, beside that lake, and she's got her little cane. She's walking her little boy. Now, as you probably know, anytime there's water and there's rocks, those two, they come together especially if little kids are there. So that little boy, he's picking up that little rocks and he's throwing it into the lake like that, throwing it into the lake. And the old woman is taking her cane, she's rooting around there along the trail to see if there are any good sweat rocks. And as she's looking away, she didn't realize it. <laughs> A big jackfish just grabbed her boy and swam out into that little small lake. Hey, she said, Anda, come back here. You take my boy, bring my boy back. She hollered out to that jackfish, but he's already gone. Oh man, that woman got busy. She started cutting down these little spruce trees. You know, in the Yukon, it's such a short growing season that the spruce are not very big along the shore. She cut off all the dried brush. Then she limbed those spruce, many of them, with her little ax. She's got a little stone ax there. She had to work quickly. Her boy is in the belly of the fish. So she had cut off all the dried brush. She took those poles that she had limbed, and she had spruce root with her, some long root and she started making rafts. She made rafts. The old man that told me this, 
Sam, he said, I don't know how many rafts she makes. She made lots. She's working really fast. And she, on top of the raft, she'd pile this dried brush. And on top of that, she put these sweat rocks. And then she got her little flint. She'd make a spark with her flint. She got dried leaves, she made fire. And she had made torches. This is what they used the reeds for. They bound, bundle them up like this. And in the fall time, when the fish come, they light these reed, these reed torches. And they go to the shore, and the fish come in, and they throw them out. This is how they fished. That's why this little lake was so important. This is where you would get your tools for fishing. And she grabbed one of those reed, those reed torches. She lit it on fire. She went to the first raft. She pushed it into the water. She lit that dried spruce brush, pushed it out. The next one, the next one, till this little lake was on fire. All these rafts were burning burning out there on the lake. And as those hot rocks were heated, these sweat rocks were getting hotter, and the poles disintegrated, all these rocks started going into the water. Going into the water. Pretty soon that little lake was just boiling. The giant jackfish surfaced did. That old woman ran out there. That lake wasn't very deep, and she ran out there with a great big willow hook, dragged the fish back, threw the fish on the shore, took her little knife, cut open its stomach, laid all the guts out, pulled it out. Too late. I mean, just a skeleton of her little son. That didn't stop her. She got a fresh moose hide, and she cut some fresh spruce boughs, and she laid the boughs on the ground. She took that very fresh moose hide that had never been used for anything. It was beautifully tanned, and she placed that on the spruce. And upon that hide, she took the little skull of her little boy, and she placed him there. And all the bones, because he had already been totally digested, and she put all the little bones there. And she wrapped him. Very lovingly, very gently, she wrapped him up. And she began to sing over those bones. They say that old woman, she sang for four days and four nights. She didn't eat, she didn't sleep. She just sang for her little boy. And on the fifth morning, that little moose hide covering came apart and that little boy came out. Now the old man that told me this story, he said, Grandchild, look around here. He said, some of the people here in this town, they come from that boy. And that's the story. Thank you.